Okay, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. And welcome back to uh, 3D Collisions in Game Maker Studio 2 in native Gmail. This is a part of a long-running series that I'm doing involving uh, implementing a bunch of 3D collision code in native Gmail without the need for fancy DLLs or anything. If you have not seen the first three videos in that series, I recommend going back, watching those, and getting yourself caught up. Uh, in the last video, we implemented uh, checks for uh, single points against a bunch of uh, a bunch of geometric shapes like spheres and uh, axis-aligned bounding boxes and planes and that sorts of thing. And uh, today we're going to be talking about spheres and checking spheres against different shapes. Uh, today's video is probably going to be a little bit uh, shorter than the last one because there are fewer things for us to implement. Uh, let's see, for example, uh, spheres against spheres against these things, spheres against these bricks. Checking for collisions here. All right, let's start off easy. Checking spheres against spheres. Uh, this is going to be much like checking a point against a sphere. Uh, when we check the point against the sphere, we're just checking to see if the distance between the point's origin uh, is, and the, the sphere's origin is less than or equal to the sphere's radius. And um, likewise, we can do something very, very similar for uh, two spheres. And that is just going to be return self dot uh, position dot distance two. Uh, sphere dot position is less than or equal to and honestly you might just want to say less than here instead of less than or equal to because if two spheres are sort of uh, touching each other you may not count that as a collision but I'm going to say less than or equal to uh, self dot radius plus sphere dot radius because after all spheres are really just big points and uh, in a lot of ways they can be treated the same and in a lot of ways uh, if you can detect if a point is, uh, is overlapping a shape. You can also check to see if a sphere is overlapping a shape by getting the nearest point to that shape, uh, to the point, and checking to see if the distance is uh, is less than the radius of the sphere. And that's going to be a running theme with, uh, with today's collision checks. So we've got this one line of code. We can test this one line of code. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to load up the test project. So set shape one to a sphere. We can also set shape two to another sphere, and we can check to see, we can move these guys around, we can check to see if they are overlapping, and it looks like about the point where collision stops being detected is indeed uh, where the uh, the two spheres touch each other, where the radii are, um, where the, where, the radi where the distance between them is greater than the sum of the radii. That is a, uh, spheres are kind of wonderful, and that checking for collisions like that is, is that easy. Let's see. See here, they're they're still overlapping slightly. Now they're now they're not, and you can move them you can move them up and down too. All right, that's sphere sphere. That's fun to say. Uh, we can check off that square in the uh, in the little progress report. Can I call it that? I'm gonna call it the progress report. That little uh, matrix of shapes that I've been drawing on paper to uh, to track our progress. Uh, next, the axis align bounding box. This is where we're going to start using the. Um, uh, the nearest point functions that we wrote in, uh, in previous, uh, in the last video, at the end of the last video. And uh, we're going to get the nearest point from our axis align bounding box to our sphere. So I can say var nearest is going to equal uh, ab dot nearest point self dot origin, self dot origin, self dot position. Origin is what I'm. Origin is the terminology that I'm using for uh, for rays, and not not the actual shapes. Next, uh, var difference is going to be. Actually, instead of calling it difference, uh, dist distance is going to be nearest dot uh, distance to uh, self dot position, and uh, we can return distance is less than, or I suppose equal if you want to account for touching for uh, for the sphere touching the the ab. Phrasing. If distance is less than or equal to self dot radius. Okay, that should be all we need for the axis line bounding box checks. Did not mean to accidentally delete that. Uh, this is the moment of truth to see if I implemented the uh, the nearest point function correctly. So I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to say uh, point uh, shape one to the ab and shape two to the sphere, and they're currently overlapping. They're no longer overlapping. All right, they are barely overlapping there. If I were to look up a little bit and uh, move move you out, you're no longer overlapping. Good. Shapes overlap there, no longer. 
And on the third axis, the third axis shouldn't be any different from the first two axes, but I can uh, I can use page up and page down to to uh, get a look at what happens when I move the box up or down. And it does indeed look like we are properly detecting collisions with axis aligned bounding boxes and spheres. Okay. Again, I suppose there is an argument to be made about if uh, if two surfaces are are like tangent to each other or uh, in contact with each other, but not like overlapping each other, whether or not that should count as a collision. But that is a uh, that is a matter for you to uh, to decide for yourself. All right, spheres and abs. We can uh, mark off those two squares on the progress report. And the last one. This is going to be a shorter video than than the last one. I really don't want to make videos that are just like 45 minutes of just straight up math because I know that people are going to tune out and not get a whole lot from them. Uh, so I will just end it here when I'm finished with uh, spheres and planes. Spheres and planes. Okay, so we can uh, once again get the nearest point of our nearest uh, from the plane to uh, self dot position. So this is going to be uh, the nearest point uh, to the plane relative to the origin of the sphere, to the uh, to the position of the sphere. And uh, like I mentioned, either at the beginning of this video or the end of the last one, um, spheres being big points are really just kind of convenient because if you can get the nearest point to a surface, uh, you can you can tell if the sphere is overlapping that surface by um by simply checking to see if the if the distance between the over the nearest point and the origin is is less than the radius. So we can, uh, once again, this is going to look a lot like checking the axis align bounding box of our disk is going to be uh, near s dot distance to self dot position. And we are going to return uh, dist is less than or equal to self dot radius. All right. Again, it's pretty much the same. In fact, I think this is actually exactly the same. It looks pretty similar. All right, let's check a sphere and a, uh, and a plane. So I can set shape one to plane. I can set shape two to a another plane. I meant to set that to a sphere. Uh, right now we see they overlap. If I move, I want shape one to be the sphere because that's the one that moves around and shape two to be the plane. If I move the sphere around, we are still, we are always going to be colliding with the plane. If I move the sphere up or down, we can see that the sphere is appropriately, um, is appropriately detecting or not detecting collision. All right. I have implemented those functions correctly, which makes me happy because those were, uh, I did not test those at the end of the last video, which I know is a terrible idea, but it seems to have, uh, it seems to have worked out. All right. You are barely contacting the, the sphere and the, the plane. In fact, I think we are, we are exactly like flush against each other. And, um, this is a situation where using less than or less than or equal to would actually matter. All right. I, I, there is a big argument to be made for uh, for not using less than or equal to here because like if the player is standing on the ground or something like that if you have a sphere that's representing the player or uh, later on I do want to implement capsules if you have a, a capsule that's representing the player and it's uh it's perfectly contacting the ground you don't want the game to constantly be saying like there's a collision here uh, you want to just say that 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 the two surfaces are contacting each other but not overlapping anyway. Those are spheres. Spheres are nice. Spheres are big points. The math is really easy. I love spheres. Uh, next time we are going to be um, doing axis align bounding boxes and planes because we only actually have three functions, three uh, collision checking functions left to implement for axis aligned bounding boxes and planes uh, because we've already done some of the functions for some of the other shapes and we don't need to do them again. Again, we can check off uh, spheres and planes on the progress report and that is starting to fill in nicely. After we do abs and planes, it is going to be time to talk about ray casts and line casts. And then we'll see where we go from there. I have not decided yet if I want to talk about triangle meshes first or if I want to actually talk about the other primitive shapes like um, oblique bounding boxes, which is going to be a lot of, a lot of matrix spam or, or capsules, which are sort of like stretchy spheres combined with like cylinders and they're a little bit weird. But regardless, we'll get there. Triangles might actually be easier for me to make videos on first because I've, I've implemented uh, triangle collisions. Uh, before and they'll probably be easy to talk about. I do want to get a little bit more practice with the other shapes before I try to make a video on them. Anyway, my name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. I try to post about two of these game dev videos a week, one of these tutorial tutorials and one let's make a tower defense game. If you want the code for this, uh, if you want the code for this project, uh, check for the GitHub repository in the video description. You can poke around in the code, change it, try to break it, do whatever you want. 
I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, there will be links to that in all the usual places. You can see your name in the credits, get access to them a day early, see previews of my future plans, all that fun stuff. Otherwise, I hope you all found this interesting. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Kiara Elizabeth, Connor, David Key, Edward Holt, Emily Coyo, Halo Factory, Posho, Sindra Larson, Tusk, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or to hear yourself shouted out at the end here, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.